In this session, let us understand what are meant by cooling towers and what are its function. What are cooling towers? So, to understand cooling towers, let us see the basic things what we already studied in the um, thermodynamics. Right? In the thermodynamics, what we studied is if I have got a source, right, and that source. If I supply some heat uh, to a body and I can deliver work, uh, that is called as a heat engine, right? This is called as heat engine. And one important thing that uh, we noticed here in the Kelvin's plant statement in the second law of thermodynamics, uh, if I am supplying 100 kilojoule of uh, heat, uh, I cannot get uh, right if uh, the Q Q here is a uh, 100 kilojoule. I cannot get the, uh, it is impossible to get the, a 100 kilojoule of work. Why? Why it is not possible? Only because I want a sink, right? There, there is a sink which uh, delivers the heat to the, to the um, a, a body where uh, because 100 kilojoule of work, hmm, I cannot produce 100 kilojoule of work. So, if I have done 100 kJ of heat is supplied, I may get around say 80 kJ of work, right? 80 kJ of work, remaining 20 kJ has to be dumped somewhere and that is called as a sink. So, like uh, in an IC engine, like in an IC engine, the, uh, the role of a uh, radiator which is played, right? Without radiator, can I think to uh, operate an IC engine? Next to impossible, right? It can be run for a short duration, but I cannot uh, run it for a long duration. So same role will be taken uh, by the cooling towers in a thermal power plants. So there are two type of uh, cooling tower. One is a wet and one more is a dry. So uh, here it has been mentioned uh, the exhaust steam means in the turbine, right? I have got a number of stages. Right? It is mounted on the uh, shaft and have got a number of stages. And the last stage of the blade, uh, right, it has got uh, some uh, space. Right? There is some clearance has to be given. If a uh, high pressure stream is given, it will work through that one, right, through the moving blade and the fixed blades. Uh, but after that, uh, it has been dumped out. All right? It has been taken out. And this, uh, it is in the form of steam and it has got heat content. I have to send to a condenser, right? For a condenser, right? Here in the condenser, this steam enters, but it has to be to change the phase role. I have to use a, a certain amount of a water or right air, but it generally water is supplied, and this water, right? It has to, uh, it will be get heated, uh, and it has been sent to the cooling tower. This is the uh, um, line diagram or to understand how the cooling tower works with the along with the turbine. The wet cooling towers are large and, and the hot water from the condenser is allowed to fall here. The falling water comes in contact with the air, atmospheric air and uh, we have seen the hot air in the form of steam getting out of a right to, uh, dumping out to the atmosphere right uh, in the um, larger cooling towers so in dry cooling tower either turbine exhaust steam is uh, directly condensed in the cooling tower or hot water from the condenser is cooled in the tower so such cooling tower are used in the plant where sufficient because it requires uh, a large quantity of water therefore I want to have the source, maybe river, right, or a solar, uh, or a, a pond, right, a bigger pond. So, a source of water should be sufficient. And here it has been mentioned I should have a, a material wood, but it, it is a when I am talking about the wood, it should be taking that load. I cannot. Uh, it should be 
टी कुड राइट और बेटर नाउ इज इज द कॉम्पोजिट मटेरियल आल्सो बीन रिप्लेस्ड राइट फॉर इंस्टेड ऑफ वुड राइट और एल्स आई कैन गो फॉर स्टील एंड कंक्रीट द लार्ज पावर प्लांट जनरली कॉन्सेंट्रेट स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ हाइपरबॉलिक इन नेचर because they provide sufficient cooling and having high cooling capacities so the cooling towers whether it is a wet type or dry type they are classified as follows they are classified as wet type in a natural drop cooling tower forced drop cooling tower induced drop cooling tower and in dry type we have direct type and indirect type let us study these type in a detail so here if you see the as i told earlier i have got a condenser from the condenser the water the uh, water right has to be the water will be supplied from here right from the the cooling tower and the hot water has to enter at a height right to make you convenient i shown over here so from both the sides and it uh, it uh, sorry it will come from from this junction not at the top right and it will go through this matrix like a structure that is packing where it will exchange the heat and a counter flow air may be there or may not be there but it will come in contact with the atmospheric gas and it get condensed and here the i will get in the water form which is be collected there in the in the pond and when the other uh, the hot water when it goes it is in saturated condition it comes out in the form of a, the vapor form out of the chimney so uh, this is the main uh, function of uh, any natural type cooling tower if you observe here there are no fans right there are no fans attached over here so the natural type cooling towers are used for the larger capacity and this nature is called as a hyperbolic right and opening at the bottom to collect the water at the lowest portion of the structure water pond is constructed for the collection of cooling water in operation the cooling tower from the condenser is uh, to the top of the cooling tower the water is sprayed from the top and falls uh, and the sprinkles because of the height the natural drop is created and air rises uh, to the air rises from the bottom right so what is mean to say the the because of the density difference uh, right the the hot air will go up uh, the cold water always remain at the bottom and water of course is a liquid form has to fall down the falling water comes in contact with the rising air and gets a cooled and collected in the pond that is pumped back once again in meantime uh, i will need some makeup water because always at 30% right 30 to 35% of makeup water always needed because because of the uh, the phase change evaporation is taking place and uh, there will be loss right but drift eliminators are provided to hold this uh, uh, losing water molecule but still there will be certain losses of the water droplet while going to to the height the height of the cooling tower ranges from 50 to 80 meter height so that uh, height will be proper so here let us see what are meant by force drop cooling tower that is wet type as the figure shows here here we have got like uh, what you studied in the drop tube here we can see there is a fan provided and that fan is go, uh, supplying the air which moves right across the system so the the fan is provided and the, this fan moves and here see the uh, from the condenser the water has come it is passing through this matrix or the packing the right while this process the it comes in contact with the air and this water is collected in the pond which is taken once again to the condenser 
in this way it works so there is a need of one fan and that fan is provided at the bottom so here it is used for the small capacity it cannot be used for the larger one and draft created is a very low here hence to create the draft a forced draft fan is provided at the bottom the cooling tower is rectangular in section having baffle baffle is nothing but i am having restriction i am having uh, 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 the to define the particular path for the air the flow direction that is called as a baffle or obstruction at the center the force drop fan provided at the bottom and pressurize the air the hot water from the condenser is sprayed from the top while falling water through baffles and obstacle it comes in contact with the rising force draft air and get cooled the cooled water is collected in the pond and it has been recirculated make a pattern as i told earlier around 30 to 35% is needed let us see what is meant by induced draft cooling tower it is similar but i will have the fan at the top right it is a used for the small capacity power plant and it is a rectangular in section the operation of the induced draft fan is to fan sucks the air from the baffle from the opening at the bottom of the tower right and the hot water pumped from the condenser is sprayed at the top the falling water comes in contact with the rising air and gets cooled the cooled water is collected in the pond and pumped back to the condenser here uh, what i observed is we are having the fan at the top right only one fan there is no fan provided at the inlet so this fan uh, if it is not operational that is dangerous many times uh, these birds and all will come and sit over this fan unknowingly right and this causes uh, the death of these birds and all right and the people one who is working the power plant they never come to know uh, during operation right and these um, during annual shutdown these are getting uh, fallen down at this area and they notice this thing so it is uh, yes sometimes unavoidable because they are far away uh, from the places that is the main disadvantage what i observed uh, in this type of a uh, Uh, induced draft fans but uh, see in the uh, every fan you uh, have the fan at the bottom but having the fan at the bottom the area like manali right the cold area the there may be formation of the ice formation right that is a, also disadvantage over there right let us see the features uh, of a direct type of cooling towers in this type uh, the steam is collected in a large steam header at the top and now here we have studied the fins so here the steam tubes are provided with the external fins to enhance the heat transfer from the body right and this steam condenses as a water in the condensate header and it is collected in the condensate tank so direct type requires a little bit less quantity of water as compared to the uh, earlier one so from the tank the water is pumped to the feed water line indirect uh, dry cooling towers uh, here it has been classified uh, in three uh, uh, we have two in uh, um, major application first one is a indirect dry cooling tower with a conventional surface condenser means i am having the combination right and that are also in series the first one is a conventional surface condenser right the shell and tube heat exchanger then i am having the cooling water means uh, by this one i can reduce uh, i can balance between the water available and uh, the cost right and uh, the condensate used is a feed water then the second heat exchanger is the hot water to air heat exchanger in which a hot water from the surface condenser is cooled with the help of pinned tube similar to track so here uh, 
it is a dry type so it is a combination i can have a combination so the second one is that indirect cooling tower with the open type condenser what is that this means here the construction of operation of cooling tower is similar to the dry indirect cooling tower with surface type uh, condenser except open spray type condenser this is a there so here it is a, we are having the open open spray type of condenser instead of a surface condenser surface condenser is nothing but shell and tube all right and here it is a open spray type this is the only main difference between this two system so thus this cooling tower is also uses a two heat exchange in series the first one is a direct contact spray type one and the second one is a indirect type right where the hot water from the condenser is cooled with the help of finger tube surfaces uh, with the dry cooling tower so a part of hot water is used in a, as a feed water